Hello and welcome to part two. So I'm just going to start by changing our visual style to a wireframe so we can see what we're doing. And then we're going to create two sketches. So this is going to be essentially a start and an end point of our blade surface. So I'm going to draw a circle here and this is, we're just going to trim the start of the blade to this circle to ensure that it doesn't interfere with the hole in the center. So then grab your line tool and just draw a horizontal line. You could make this a spleen if you wanted, but we're just going to keep it simple. Just go for a straight line. Then get your trim tool and then trim that to the circle we've just drawn. And then now you're going to want to convert the circle to a reference because we don't need that. And click finish sketch. So that is the start of our blade. So then we're going to do exactly the same thing on the top plane we created, which is just offset 4.5 mil from the top. So we're going to, again, draw a circle, which we're going to trim to. Take a line, draw a straight line. And then we're going to need to specify the offset angle from the original. So I'm just going to sketch a line that's going to be a reference and set this angle to 50 degrees. So this is the essentially the overall travel of the blade surface. So be sure to convert your line and circle to a reference and then trim the line we want to work with to the circle we created. and finish sketch. Next we need a closed profile to produce our surface mesh from. So we're going to use a 3D sketch to simply join up these two sketches. So choose 3D sketch and then choose spleen. And then select the start point for both of the lines of the two sketches. Now we only need two points for this one because this is not going to be seen in the model so they simply need to be joined. However the outer edge is the profile that you'd want the outer to follow. So in this case I'm going to use a three point spleen. So with this you can then have options to uh, play with the shape a bit more. So as you can see I can drag drag this around and just make that so you've got the profile you want and then click finish sketch now we have a closed profile from a combination of 2d and 3d sketches we can create a 3d surface to work from so in inventor you can do that using the boundary patch command so under surface in the toolbar select patch and then now choose the four sketches we've just done and press OK. So this has generated a 3D surface from us that we now need to make into a solid body. So then go to thicken slash offset in the modify area of the toolbar, select the 3D surface and make sure the direction is set to both ways from the center and make the thick, overall thickness of about 0.8 millimeters. Hit OK and as you can see we now have our solid body. So I'm just going to set the view back to solid with edges so we can see where we're at and then all there is to do now is to pattern this around 360 degrees and a total of six times. So select the circular pattern command, choose the body we've just created from the thicken tool, select the center axis we're rotating around, you can see the count of six is set, then when that's all done press OK and it might take a short while to compute but 
we should now have something that starts to look a little bit like what we're going for. So now we have that, we essentially just need to repeat the process for the secondary veins. The leading edge of the secondary vein starts a little bit lower than the primaries, so we're going to create a new offset plane and that's going to be 10 millimeters from the top surface. And then we're just going to do exactly the same thing create a start and end point for our surface and then thicken and pattern around. So I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker. Again, draw a circle, draw the starting point and this line is going to be at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal which is essentially a 30 degrees offset from the primary blades. And again, trim and make your construction lines reference finish sketch and now we're going to create a sketch on the new plane we've created at 10 millimeters sketch a circle i'm going to make the offset of this one 60 degrees from the horizontal trim and convert to reference and finish sketch as before, we then need two 3D sketches to join these two lines. So a two-point spleen for the center again, and then a three-point spleen for the outer edge. And adjust the curvature as you wish, and finish. After that, create a boundary patch to create your 3D surface and then thicken again 0.8mm in both dimensions and then pattern that solid body around the center line. And finally, we need to get rid of all the excess we've created around the edge. So we're going to do that by revolving a cut, essentially. So choose your center plane. Yeah, you can do this from the feature tree to save, save time again from the origin. And then create a 2D sketch on this plane. Then we're going to sketch one more profile. So using the line command, we're going to sketch from the outer diameter of the main body and make that about seven millimeters high. And then we're going to need an end point for the radius we're going to create. So this is dimension in this case at 24 millimeters from the center. And then we're going to need our arc. Set that to 15. Then just need one constraint here, which is a tangential constraint. That's going to tidy everything up like so. Then in order to revolve a profile, it always has to be closed. So just join up sketch on the outside here and finish sketch. So go to revolve and set the boolean as subtract and that's it we're done. So you can just go ahead and hide all the construction stuff we've used along the way and just a bit of tidying up now you can go around and Add a few chamfers and in radii, I went around and did all the leading edges of the blades, just added a simple fillet. But um, yeah, that's it. So hope you found this video useful. 
please subscribe if you did. If you have any questions at all, then just leave a comment below. And I'll do my best to get back to you and try and help you out. So as always, thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next one.